there guys, my name's Lompo, but you already knew that because you're so darn perfect. Today I thought we'd talk about something that's been on my mind for a few days, and that is Pokemon. Now I know that when it comes to discussion, there are three things you never, ever talk about. There's religion, there's politics, and of course, there is change to an already long-established franchise. And I know that last one's really a doozy, but I feel like we're mature enough. I mean, what has it been, like 20 years? I think, I think we're old enough now to talk about Pokemon. But before we get into that, I want to remind you guys that our store launched just a few uh, weeks ago, and we want to let you know that we've got some awesome designs on there for you. Make sure you go ahead and check that out. We've got shirts starting at $15, and every bit that you spend on that store comes back to helping the channel become better and better every day. And you know what? What more could you ask for? I mean, we're, pretty, we're pretty good people. We're pretty cool people. Pretty cool dudes. Right? The funniest part about this franchise about evolution is its resistance to real change. I've discussed before how iteration can lead to long-term success and how franchises that remain rigid oftentimes fall by the wayside. I've given examples and I've been able to plot out patterns, but by Arceus this franchise eludes all reason. Real talk folks, I don't know how they've done this. But that's not really what I'm here to talk about. If you don't know, Nintendo recently dropped our first look at Generation 8 through an extended trailer. And like every Pokemon game since Gen 2, the fanbase is split. Personally, I need to see more before I can feel any type of way about it. It looked cool enough, but I had issues with Sun and Moon that don't seem like they've really been addressed. Hell, the main thing I wanted from this title was the ability to move the friggin' camera. But no. Which leads me to believe that this game, while touted as being for the core Pokemon fan, may not deliver on what the first mainline Pokemon game on the home console should have been. But once again, I could be wrong, I just haven't seen enough. It's not really going to be that hard to convince me to get this one. I mean, probably Shield, because... I'm a contrarian. Yes, every fan base has its issues, and I'm not going to say or pretend that Pokemon is the worst. Not by a long shot. I mean, Overwatch, League of Legends, and Sonic fan bases exist. What I will say is that this franchise seems to be quite a bit more segmented than others. There are many, many types of Pokemon fan, but for the sake of the video, we'll focus on, in my opinion, the two most dominant extremes the Kanto Cultists and the Pokefectionists. The Kanto Cultists refer to the group of Pokemon fans who started in Generation 1 and are completely sold on the idea that everything thereafter is absolute garbage. The Pokefectionists refer to the fans who've played nearly all, if not all, Pokemon games in the mainline series. And these people believe that Game Freak can do no wrong. That any issues within any of the games are merely a matter of skewed perception. A la, you're too old, it's for children, it was never that difficult to begin with, etc, etc. If you're someone who barely dabbles in the franchise, then you should probably be able to tell how crazy all of that sounds. But for long-term fans of the games like myself, these are points of view we have to deal with all the time. None more than when a new game is announced. I've noticed this very quickly after the reveal of Sword and Shield. Now, some of this isn't completely on the fan base. Much of it has to do with how the games are created. With most other popular Nintendo franchises, there is a game or games within the main line that do something that really changes the way the gameplay is approached. For Mario, it was Mario 2, Mario 64, and Mario Odyssey. For Zelda, it was Zelda 2, Wind Waker, and Breath of the Wild. Hell, even Donkey Kong started out as an arcade game about vertical movement. What I'm saying is, the earlier you iterate, the more accepting the franchise will be of change down the line. This is why when a game like Pokemon Let's Go comes out after several generations, we see the collective wince amongst the hardcore. Don't get me wrong, there were many hardcore players, much to my own surprise, who took to the game. Now this may have been due to some ever-present nostalgia for Generation 1, which I personally will never understand. As a quick side note, I played Generation 1. It was good. It was really good. A lot of Pokemon games are. But let's be frank, much like every Pokemon game is plagued with its own set of issues. My biggest problem is the fact that Psychic Pokemon were basically unchecked. There were three Ghost-type Pokemon and they were all weak to Psychic. That's not how you build a weakness system. This is a problem we still see to this day. Like, why does Electricity still only have one weakness? But that aside, the Pokemon designs themselves are often hallmarked by the Kanto Cultist to be the most creative. While I can't agree that Pokemon design doesn't hit you quite the way it used to, I can say with confidence that Pokemon design in Generation 1 isn't all that. This has been stated so many times, but I mean, come on, there's a Pokemon that's literally a Pokeball. I'm sure the design team really stirred about that one. But yes, each generation has its own poor designs, and Kanto isn't innocent. 
I will say there are elements of Generation 1 that I really do miss, much more plausible villains being just one. I mean, Team Rocket, as iconic as they are, you know, their motivation makes a lot more sense than eco-terrorism like Aqua and Magma. I mean, those two had no semblance of funding. At least Team Rocket had illegal child gambling. But there's the other side, the Pokefectionists. Any group of people who act as apologists for laziness are a bit bothersome as they are the primary group of people providing the idea that companies don't need to iterate their properties. And I concede to the idea that I said before that they don't really have to. These games sell like crazy. It's pretty much the Call of Duty syndrome. But you have to ask yourself why that is. Well, there's a solid stream of people who love the games for what they are and for the most part want to see, you know, new creatures and new locations. Period. However, the problem with only seeking this from a new installment is that it doesn't push what the franchise is capable of. The reason why it doesn't work for Generation 8's case is that the scale should have changed. Pokemon has, for over 20 years now, been an RPG for Nintendo's handheld consoles. And because of this, the adventures had a certain look and feel. Last year's Pokemon games on the Nintendo Switch were met with a patient nod because we understood that the turnaround on a flagship title wouldn't be so fast that we should expect something jaw-dropping as soon as the console launched and then we were shown Pokemon Sword and Shield this year. As someone who still regularly plays his copy of Pokemon Moon, because I'm a contrarian, I have to say that I saw entirely too many similarities between the titles. I'm sorry, but I sometimes feel like I'm going insane with this. Just let me move the camera. I don't care that it's not an open world. Not every game needs to be. Just let me move it. This is an innovation we saw two decades ago. It just makes the game feel a bit shallow. I'm not entirely sure of what they're scared to show me. Now don't get me wrong, from what I've read through the rumors and the like, the size of the map should be the biggest to date, but that doesn't mean anything if it's just the last title moved to a new location. So those are the basic issues with each group. Now how do we fix them? When it comes to the Kanto Cultists, all I have to say is branch out. I don't mean with Let's Go, that's just confirmation bias. No, you should try non-Kanto games. I would suggest Heart Gold, Soul Silver, Omega Ruby, or Alpha Sapphire. These games are remakes of earlier Pokemon games. This means that there should be a pleasant mix of older locations, themes, new mechanics, and new Pokemon. If at the core of your experience you're simply like, no, this isn't for me, then it's time to take a step back and think about whether or not your tastes have simply changed. It happens. I used to play every single type of Sonic game there was, and then I just stopped. I had no interest in it anymore. It wasn't so much that I didn't like Sonic anymore or found that the games were bad. The games just stopped appealing to me. I can't tell you if it was the new playstyle, the stories, or whatever. Something happened and I just stopped being a Sonic fan. The difference between me and the Kanto Cultists is I don't spend my time reminiscing over something that wasn't perfect in the first place. And I definitely don't bash the Sonic games that have come along after I stop playing them. For the people who see no issue with the games, I can't help but wonder if they know what other RPGs are doing. What other franchises that have been around just as long are doing. Why it's okay to hide behind the it's for kids excuse for every little thing. If you've grown up with the games and you know that there are glaring issues with the franchise that can and should be addressed. Like doesn't it seem silly that little things like following Pokemon are inconsistently present in the franchise? Why your trainer could have different skin tones in Pokemon X and Y but not in Omega Ruby and Sapphire that came out after? Like seriously, why? It just seems like the franchise sometimes takes steps forward only to be taken back later. Remember Pokeblocks? Remember Apricorn Pokeballs? Hell, what about traveling to locations that were literally a stone's throw away from the game's main region? This is something they teased in Pokemon Sun and Moon and I totally thought that's what the game was going to do, and they didn't. And that would have been the game to do it. All they do the entire game is talk about Kanto. Well, let me go to Kanto. As much as I'm over Kanto, I mean, it still would have been cool, it would have been a nice nostalgia trip for the people who bought the game, but no, they did that in Let's Go, and I don't know, it didn't feel like it needed to be a separate experience. All I'm saying is that the games aren't perfect. No game is. And this is because I believe the developers are comfortable. They're in a place right now where they think that they don't really have to innovate in order to keep their audience. And of all the things I blame on the development staff, this is one I refuse to. It is us. We are the people who keep accepting the same formula time and time again. Enough is enough. I don't want anyone to think that I'm bashing people. I just want people to expect better of something we love if we see that it's stagnating. This is a franchise that I really, really appreciate, and I want to see it do bigger and better things. That's all. You've been a lovely audience. Thank you guys so much for watching. It means a lot that you got to this point. Now, if you could for a moment, just indulge me and tell me what your perfect Pokemon game would look like. What would the details include? Where would it be located? Uh, would you bring back old mechanics? Would you introduce new ones? Let me know. I wanna, I wanna see what, what that would look like to you, for real.
And uh, if you enjoyed the video, please make sure to share it. It means a lot and it helps spread my beautiful face to other beautiful faces like yours out there in the ether. So once again, thank you and stay perfect.